That sound is lovelier than your doorbell ringing. <laughs> it is. All right. I'm going to get one just so I can show you guys that they're ready. And let me wait for it to cool for a moment. Ooh, that's hot. So your beans are going to be nice and ready. Believe it or not, the beans don't look like when you cook them for two hours, but the texture and your beans, your pinto beans that we all love, are ready, okay? So let me go ahead and take some to the pan so we can be in mashing. To your medium hot pan, you're going to add your desired amount of oil. Once you add your beans, begin to mash them. Who remembers the good old days when our mothers used to get a glass cup and some moms might still be doing it mashing some beans <laughs> and, and getting it done they're so soft right I love that instapot oh, my favorite I love beans <laughs> yeah so once you mash your beans you can add salt and season to your liking but for me this is gonna be just perfect you know some things are simple and delicious this is one of them and you don't want them to be too runny you want them to be chunky like this okay so I'm going to let these cool for just a few moments so that I can start uh, preparing our, our gorditas. Today I'm going to be using the yellow maseca, which is instant yellow corn masa flour. If you guys have the regular one, the recipe is going to be the same. I'm just doing this because it's aesthetically pleasing for my kids. Makes them feel like they have something fried, you know? I do know. <laughs> All right, get your bowl. And add your maseca. And I like using maseca because I never get that stale smell that I've gotten from other brands. Oh, yeah, so yeah, okay. That's the one that I go with in case you guys are curious. But if you have a better brand that you're comfortable with using, go for it. And all this is is instant yellow corn masa. Uh-huh. I, I, the bag's definitely smaller. It is. <laughs> Poquito porque está sagrado, you know? Mm -hmm. So go ahead and add your salt. And what I just said in Spanish means just a little bit because it's holy. It's That's, sacred. Yeah, it's sacred. That's what my mom would say. Mix that around a bit. Okay. And then I'm going to slowly incorporate my warm water. So start combining and hydrating your, your masa flour. Your corn masa flour. <laughs> uh, friends, if you notice that I don't say measurements here on the channel, I'm not like the other channels, and I'm sorry. It's just that for me, I really enjoy cooking, and I grew up not having measurements for anything. And um, just, you know, all the measurements you guys need are in the description box. Um, but that's, that's how I keep myself happy and joyful when I'm cooking, you know. Talk about the food. <laughs> You notice I add my water slowly, just enough to where I get it hydrated, okay? And depending in your area, if you're in an arid area or humid, you might need more or you might need a little less. So just take it easy. See, I need a little bit more and I already had measured a cup and a half. So let me go ahead and get a little bit more so we can continue. So if I like to give this a good squeeze like this, just so that I can um, get the feel of the texture, okay? So once I have that and I've hydrated my, my masa, I'm gonna go ahead and add some oil. And what kind of oil does that, does that matter? For me, I've always used, um, I've always used uh, canola oil, mm -hmm. but I know a lot of our friends use like avocado oil. And when I cooked with avocado, avocado excuse me, <laughs> with avocado oil, I never got the consistency or the flavor that I wanted. It didn't work for me. So you want mild tasting to no tasting kind of an oil, Yeah, that's, right? that's, a, that's a good recommendation. Thanks, Claude. Mm -hmm. So once I hydrated, I just like to get my little ball. To play soccer. <laughs> you know, it's, it's how my mama taught me. Ooh, it's a really feeling nice and soft, especially if you're using warm water. If you can handle a little bit hotter, go for it. It'll soften everything up a lot better. But don't hurt yourself, guys. Be no, 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 no. You. Be careful. I realized that we have, uh, we still have some Views Club Junior on the channel watching I with told our parents. You. Yeah, you were right. <laughs> 
Don't worry, friends. I'll continue to behave myself. We love the little ones. Yeah, I do. I love you guys so much. All of you, but, you know, especially uh, families that watch together and cook together and, you know, you allow me in your homes. I want to thank you guys so much. I'm working on it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have made me grown. Grow. And grown. <laughs> and grown, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, that sassy stuff is kind of staying behind now. And I'm happy about it. We can do with a little bit of sass. Mm -hmm. Let us know in the comments, guys. <laughs> I just want to be a good old lady, you know? And sass is good. <laughs> yeah, it is good every once in a while. I'll, I'll sass you guys, but not too often. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a plate over um, my masa, and I'm going to let this set here uh, for about 10 to 15 minutes. I want everything to get hydrated so that when we make the little um, bolitas, the little balls that we need, to fill in it's gonna be a lot smoother for us okay so hang tight while we get to our next step the measurement that I would like to uh, recommend to you guys is 119 grams because you don't want them too small and you don't want them too big so about 119 grams works for this portion and you're gonna end up getting five uh, gorditas so if you want to make more then you have to you know adjust and this recipe is very forgiving to adjust so let's go ahead and get started Do you see how soft it gets it's after you let it set for a, for a few minutes? So let's see where we're at. Oh, that one was way too big. There we go, 119. So I'm just gonna continue to measure all of our little balls so that we can get started and it's a lot easier for us, okay? So as you can see, we have five masa balls, and we're gonna start. Do you remember when I made the pobrecita food with the beans and the masita in it? That's kind of the same concept we're gonna be using here. So let me show you if you guys missed that that uh, that recipe. <laughs> Thanks, mom. To your masa ball, you wanna start pr uh, pressing here in the center, okay? Just press a little flat, and then you're gonna put your thumb right in the middle, and we're gonna start pushing that groove out. You can dip your hands in a little bit of water to keep everything soft and they don't dry out for you. And you definitely don't want to squeeze too thin here. You want it to have enough of a cubby to hold the beans that we're about to place. So my ladies that have arthritis, maybe Add a little bit of oil, use a little mold, press it in slightly, be gentle when you remove it. That might help you out a little bit to get that good groove, okay? So we wanna make sure that we have a good little cubby going on. And then you're gonna add, I'm gonna say it's about a tablespoon of beans that you should be able to hold. Well, depending on what size you make them, of course, but what I have going on here is about that. So I'm gonna start squeezing here sealing it very similar to uh the pupusa style right that we made here on the channel those were delicious they're amazing okay you just want to make sure that you give it a good seal here you don't want anything to come out and then you can start shaping it into a little circle just rubbing oil and then i'm going to start flattening it out gently and you might see a few little cracks. Just make sure you're tending to those, okay? The thing I love about gorditas is that everybody has their own style, right? That is so true. And then you're going to begin torteando, which means you're making a tortilla. And this movement back and forth, that's how you say it in Spanish, torteando. I thought you were gonna say the thing about gorditas is that you're all beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true, we are. And then, you have a good thickness. If you have a bottle cap of a soda, it's a good little thickness, wouldn't you say? How else can we can we help you out with that one? Take a look, just that thickness right there. Okay, but don't go anywhere. I'm gonna show you another technique to get it done if you guys don't wanna take this route. 
So I'm going to dip my fingertips in a little bit of oil. Go all the way around and I'm going to start torteando, pressing it down gently. And if you notice, I'm pressing down with this part right here. Okay. You don't have to use oil, you can use water. For me, I just like how it's a lot slip, uh, a little bit more slippery, smoother. But the real question is, when are you gonna teach them how to make tortillas so vaqueras? <laughs> Here um, I go, putting you on the spot. <laughs> well, you guys know that's a goal of mine, so to have my outdoor kitchen. Um, I think I can get my big cast iron to fit on my grill and maybe at this point I feel like I should have listened to my husband that I should have got the bigger <laughs> the bigger grill I've been uh, bickering with him for years about it and right now I'm gonna be like okay let's do it because I need it <laughs> oh you mean you're gonna say sorry babe I was wrong <laughs> yeah, like, babe sorry here's some gorditas babe you're watching sorry <laughs> so you just have a nice flat tortilla okay and you know try it out with your first one because I know if you guys have never made these before they can be kind of complicated to stay uh, undercooked so just try to make it as thin as you can but not too thin like you would uh, tortilla for tacos they're gorditas they're little chubbies for a reason okay now that I've showed you these two uh, versions let's go ahead and warm them up on our cast iron pan el comal because that's where they taste the best. To your hot comal, you want to place your gordita. Okay, and if you don't have a comal, you can use a cast iron. Same concept, different shape, different name. <laughs> Once you place your gordita down, you're going to cook it for about seven minutes, okay? So keep an eye on it at about five minutes to see how hot your, your pan, your comal, or your cast iron is. Because the one thing that you don't want to do here is you don't want to burn it. So I currently have my setting on a medium low heat, but you guys are going to have to figure your stove top out, okay? So hang tight as we continue to cook our gordita. It's been five minutes for me, so I'm just going to take a quick look, see what we got going on. So for me, I need a little bit more, so I'm going to keep it, keep it cooking for the next two minutes, okay? I can see a little smoke coming up. I know that it's getting nice and steamed, so I'm gonna take this opportunity to flip it, okay? Because I know that part's hot and it's gonna continue to give the steam from the top. Now we want that steam from the from the bottom. Let's see how, how these delicious ones over here are doing. Use a little more time. You just wanna be careful, okay? And this is the one that doesn't have anything in it yet. So hang tight as we get through this. How long are we gonna be here? Another seven to 10 minutes. So I hope you're listening to your favorite music, chatting with your favorite friend, because these are gonna be delicious. <laughs> if you see the steam coming through here, that's what I'm talking about. That's kind of how I gauge it, that it's ready to flip. Once you start smelling the masa, you know that you're getting closer to them being done because you really have to engage your senses, not just your eyes, but you have to smell, okay? This one's been there for seven minutes, so you see that golden color? I'm gonna turn it so that we can achieve it on the other on the other side now because our comal is nice and hot and it's they're all gonna cook at different temperatures. So I'm just trying to show you what to look for so you know that they're ready. Check this one. That one needs to be turned, and that's kind of what we're looking for. Now, the way you can tell when they're done is they start puffing up. You see that? That means it's separated, everything's fully cooked inside, and we're ready to serve. This is our cooked gordita, and this is our raw one. I did this as a point of reference so you guys can see the change in color and kind of see what you're looking for to make sure that it's fully cooked, okay? So let me go ahead and place this one on my comal, and then I'm gonna come back and prepare this one for you. Now we're gonna go ahead and slice it right down the middle. You don't wanna take it all the way. That's just my beans, you guys are okay. 
it's cooked. <laughs> um, you don't want to slice it all the way. You just want to do it like halfway because we're going to fill it like a nice delicious pocket. So squeeze it a little bit so that you can open the pocket, but you don't want to break it. So be gentle. At this point, you can add a little bit more beans if you like, which I like, but it's going to be up to you. Okay. And I'm not adding cold beans. I'm adding warm beans. I warmed them up a bit. Once you fill your gordita with your beans, you're gonna add your queso fresco. Or you can use mozzarella cheese, cheddar cheese, whatever you love. I'm gonna add a lot of white onions with cilantro. You can use crema or sour cream. We all know how much you guys love sour cream. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> My weakness is coming up. <laughs> it is, but I'm gonna add a layer of cabbage. If you don't have cabbage, this tastes great with lettuce because you guys know that lettuce uh, and bean combo is amazing. And I'm gonna add a little bit more crema, build those delicious layers. And if you like spice, you can use uh, the Views chili oil or the birria chili oil is perfect for these as well. No, right this now. Is, this is my favorite, guys. I even bought a container to take it with me. <laughs> I don't know what Cloud has going on in this one, guys, but. She loves it. And it's a combo of the previous views and this one. I think that's what you did, girl. I sure did. So you need a, a good amount of this. If you guys don't like the oil, you can add the seasoning that I showed you how to make. This is the other version that you can make, okay? So we're gonna do the same slit straight through the middle. You're gonna have a nice little pocket. Add your desired amount of beans, and I like to put it in and then press it a little bit so it helps you smear it. Oh, that's a good trick. Yeah, I like adding the beans in here because the beans tend to keep a really, really hot like temperature, mm -hmm. and that allows for your filling to be nice and warm. It doesn't oh, okay. get cold. That's why I like the other version, but it's going to be up to you. So you can start filling it. Let's go with some queso fresco, and you can fill it in in no particular order. And now that you guys see that, Let's get a good tasting. Before I take a bite out of this delicious gordita, I want to thank you guys so much uh, for joining me today. And I'll be seeing you guys again on Monday. For those of you that don't know, we are uploading from Monday through Thursday. So if you missed some recipes, that gives you plenty of time to catch up on our chit chat, what we made, what we're doing. So. But if you guys miss me, you can see me on Las Donias or on our Spanish channel. Yes, we do most of the talking over there. Uh, we realize that you guys want does, you guys want us to get straight to the food and although we cook and chat the whole time we're not going to be dragging you through that so let's get to this mm -hmm. it's creamy because of the beans you got that good crisp the softness you expect from a gordita you can taste every single flavor that you're biting into and that's what I love about simple dishes like this. This is better than a sandwich. So you ladies that are worried about what you're gonna send your kids and your husband with for lunch, I think this is a great one. If you wanna keep it warm, wrap it up in some foil and then put it in their lunch box. Cause the kids end up eating at about what? About 11? I don't so know anymore. <laughs> I remember Punky, he used to eat at about 11. So if you warm, if you make these uh, the day before and in the morning before they go to school, you warm them up, it's going to be easy for you. Come on, feed our friends. Feed don't our be, friends. don't be fooled. Well, how do I? <laughs> now it's your turn. I'm ready to finish that one with pizza. Wait, you want more chili? <laughs> I'm waiting. Come on. Uh oh. I was going to say, I, I'm going to brew some coffee right now so I can finish it. I'm going to put more chili for. You chili lovers and more crema for you crema lovers. Somebody's gonna say you didn't put enough crema in there. Now it's your turn. Ay, vida mía. Gorditas, <laughs> we're gonna eat some gordita. Mm -hmm. Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.